Hey, I'm Noel Powell from Creation Effects, and this is the tutorial for the typewriter effect for Adobe After Effects. This is an After Effects template, and it allows you to just enter in your text, and then it automatically types out in one of two typewriters. So you can just choose the typewriter you want, and then it has a lot of customization options, so you have total control over the look and timing of your animation. And you can choose the paper texture and font and font size, type speed, and you can do a few words or you can do many lines of text. It's up to you. And this has been a popular template from creationeffects.com for years. It's been used all over the place, like in this music video from Weird Al. And the template just got a big lawn overdue update. So before you had to keyframe the paper and carriage to move over with each new character that typed out and then add a type bar animation to it that synced with the new characters appearing, and it was all a big pain. Well, you don't have to do that anymore. It's all automatic, so let's jump into it and I'll show you how to use it. All right, let me start by showing you what to do with the zip file that you'll download from Creation Effects. If you're on a Windows machine, uh, you should right click it and look for an option that says Extract All and open it that way. Um, that will help you prevent uh, getting error messages in After Effects uh, about missing files. But if you're on a Mac, you can just double click it to open it. And then open the folder. And you can see we've got three different After Effects projects here. This is the one that you want to open. It's, this is the, the latest update, the one that says 2022. And I've got the older versions here. So let me talk about the difference. The newer version is better in pretty much every way because your text will type out automatically. But I did have to sacrifice one feature that I, I really liked, and that is variable speed typing. So you can see in this clip how the characters are typing out at a, a different speed. The pace is constantly fluctuating. It's not being typed out like a robot. So the newer version doesn't have that as a feature. There is a way to do it with time remapping, and I'll show you how to do that near the end of the video. It just takes a bit of work. Anyway, I, I think 99% of people will want to open up the 2022 version. If uh, you think you need more control over the timing of when characters are typed out, you can go with the older one. And if you go to the website and scroll down, you can see the tutorials for the old version. So I'll leave those up there. So when you open it up, you'll see some instructions here, and in your project panel, you'll see three folders. These are the three steps you need to go through to customize your animation. So I'm gonna go through these pretty quickly at first, uh, just leaving all the settings at their default, and that will be the quickest way to uh, get your animation. After I do that, I'll go through it, and I'll go more in depth into all the customization options and how to get multiple lines of text and all that good stuff. But let's just start uh, with step one, that's choosing your paper texture. I'll open that up and open up this comp. So in here we've got several different images and you just unhide them to see what they look like. So when you find one that you like, you can just make sure that it's visible and close that comp. And then we'll go to step two, which is to edit your text. And I'll open up the pre-comp in there. So this comp is the same dimensions as your paper comp. And then in the middle, we've got this text layer named your text. And above that, we've got this instructions layer. Uh, you can unhide that. But basically what it's saying is that however your text looks in this comp is how it will look on your paper in your typewriter animation. So you can move this layer to position it where you want on the page. You can change the font, you can change the font size and color. However it looks on this page is how it will look in your final animation. I'm gonna leave it right in the center and I'm gonna leave the font and the font size because then there will be less work for us later on. All I'm gonna do is edit the text and you can do that with the text tool right here and then just click on it and I'll just say creationeffects.com. And then I'll close that, and let's move on to step three. 
In step three, we've got a couple different typewriter comps. Which one you use is entirely up to you. The second one here is a little bit more modern, if you can call any typewriter modern. Um, it's maybe from the 80s, and uh, the sound effects are more computerized sounding, like beeps and hums. And in this typewriter, the paper stays still, and the ribbon and type bars are what move across the paper, typing characters as it moves. It is a slightly different process for animating the second typewriter, and I'll show you how to do that near the end of the video. In contrast, the first typewriter has a carriage that holds the paper, and the carriage is what moves across as each character is typed out. And the first typewriter, as you can see, is, is more old-fashioned. I think that this first older typewriter is the one that most people like, and so that's the one we're going to use for most of this tutorial. Both of these typewriter comps are HD 1920 by 1080 pixels. If you want to change the resolution, like you want to make it 4K, it's really easy. You can just open it up and just change the resolution in the Composition Settings panel here. You can just use one of the presets or enter in your resolution and click OK. And the effect will work the exact same way, um, but you will see more or less of the typewriter depending on, on what you change the resolution to. So now we're more zoomed out. Um, if you want to zoom back in, you can do that on the control layer with this typewriter scale control. Uh, we'll get to the controls in a little bit. And let's, you can see it's really zoomed in. Um, let's just play it back and see what it looks like. All right, that's kind of cool, but uh, you can see the text is off center and it's obscured by this type guide here. So typically you'd want to move this into position into the center where you can see it um, after it finishes typing out. So I'll show you how to do that. But first let's go over what's in this comp and how this is all set up. So at the top we've got another instructions layer which you can read and uh, the second layer is also instructions. This one has a description of each customization control and what they do. So the customization controls can be found on this third layer, the control layer. If you select that and then look in your effect controls panel, you can see all the different controls. So if you don't see this panel, just go to window and choose effect controls. So with these controls, you can customize the typing, like the speed, and you can control the size and position of the typewriter. Uh, I'll go over all of these in more detail in a little bit. But let's look at these other layers. Um, some of these are just different parts of the typewriter. And we've got a bunch of different keystrike pre-comps here. Let me just double click one of these to open up the pre-comp and I'll play it back. And that's all it is. It's just one of these type bars coming up and then striking the ribbon. So you can see the ribbon is this part. It lifts up and then the type bar strikes it and the ink that's on the ribbon is then transferred to the paper. So each of these key strikes are slightly different. A different type bar pops up. Um, that's just to add variation. And with each new character that appears on your paper, a different key strike animation is played. And it's totally random. Anyway, let's keep going. Uh, we've got more parts of the typewriter, and then we've got a text layer. So this text layer is set up to mimic whatever the text layer on your uh, Step 2 folder is like. Again, any changes you want to make to your text, don't do it on this layer. Do it in the Step 2 pre-comp. And then we've got our paper texture. That's the pre-comp from in here. And then we've got the carriage. Uh, the carriage is this part of the typewriter. So it slides back and forth and it holds the paper. So typically with a typewriter, after each letter appears, the carriage immediately shifts over just slightly to put it into position for the next character. And then at the end of the line, the paper would move up to position it for the next line of text. And then the carriage would also move quickly to the right 
so that that first character of the next line would be right in the center where the type bars strike. And if any of that didn't make sense, it will in a second because I'm going to animate all of that movement to show you how it's done. Um, and then also at the very bottom of this timeline, we've got these uh, audio layers. So these spacebar audio files, uh, one will play randomly with each spacebar character that is typed. So I've got three different ones for variety's sake. Uh, below that are three more sound effects. So these ones are the ones you'll use when you animate the paper in the carriage to go to the next line of text. Um, and I'll show you how you can use those later on. All right, let's take a closer look at the control layer. Uh, remember, there's a description of all of these controls on this layer here. But I'm going to try and quickly go over all of these. So the first one is the type start time, and it's set to one second by default. Uh, that just means that the typewriter will start typing out at the one second mark. Type speed, that's the number of frames that is spent for each character. So if you put that at four or something like that, it's going to type out really quickly. Character width, um, that's the amount that the carriage will shift after each letter. We'll have to adjust that uh, when we change the font size or the font. And I'll show you that later. Um, Roughen text edges. This one affects a Roughen edges effect on this text layer. So you can see it up here. And if you want more control over it, you can just open up the effect and edit the properties directly. Or you can just adjust the amount with this control. So if we turn that up to three, you can see what that does to the edges of the text. Uh, it's just a little more realistic for text on paper that made by an old typewriter. Uh, just keep in mind, like if we were to zoom out, I don't know if you can see that, but the text has almost disappeared um, because at this zoom level, this is way too much roughened text edges amount here. So we'd have to turn that off if we were zoomed out like that. And uh, next we've got this pause typing checkbox. You can see there's a keyframe already on here. We can see that keyframe if I select the layer and then type the U key. That's the shortcut to reveal the keyframes. So we've got a, a hold keyframe right at frame zero. And uh, don't delete that or the effect won't work. Um, but if you ever want to pause the typing, you would just go to a frame where the ribbon is down and nothing's moving. And then just click that checkbox. And you can see that added an, another keyframe here. And uh, when you're ready to unpause it, you just go to that frame and then click the checkbox again. So you'll need to do that when you animate the paper to move up in, and the carriage to move over for a, to position it for the next line of text. Um, we've got a, a checkbox to hide the type bar guide. That's this thing here. And then also there's a ruler. So the ruler and the guide, those are part of the original typewriter. But I realize that some people might not want them. So I put that option there to hide them if you want. And there's also an option to hide the ribbon. Because when the ribbon is up, it obscures the text and it makes it hard to see if the text is positioned correctly. So you can temporarily hide it like that and then make sure that your characters line up with the center of the guide. And next we've got some transform controls. So a couple of these affect the scale and position of the typewriter. So you can you saw how we can zoom out like this. And you can change the position. And uh, these controls can be keyframes, so you can add animation to the typewriter body. Um, we've also got a carriage position control. So this one is just for horizontal movement. So whenever you reach the end of a line of text, you would need to animate this. And you'd also need to animate the paper position to move the paper up to the next line of text. So let's do that now. Um, let me just finish these controls here first. The text position, you can adjust the position of the text, um, but I don't recommend you do that here unless it's just a minor adjustment. You really should be making your changes to the text in the, the step two folder. All right, so let's go over how to uh, position the text that we typed out so that it's centered and just looks nicer. So you would probably want to animate the paper to move up so, so that it goes to the next line. So 
We can start by adding a keyframe on the paper position control. And I'll hit the U key again to show that keyframe. And I'll go forward five to 10 frames. I'm hitting the page down button to move forward. And I'll just move the paper up. You can move it up however much you want. We don't have a second line of text here, so it really doesn't matter how far we move it up. And then I'll go forward a few more frames and I'll add a keyframe on the carriage position control. And then I'll go forward 10 frames. You can do that just by holding the shift key and then page down. And I'll go forward 10 frames. And let's move this. We'll move the whole carriage to the right so that our text is centered. And uh, this movement needs some sound effects. And I've got some down here for just this sort of thing. We've got a bell and we've got a next line character sound effect, and then we've got the carriage moving. So we can use all three of those. We'll just drag them over. Let's look at where we are. I hit the U key to reveal all of our keyframes. Okay, so the action starts here. And so I'll line up our sound effects like that. Oh, and I, I forgot to unmute these. So just turn them on and let's take a look. So that looks nicer. If you wanted to, you could animate the typewriter to move down so that this text is more centered. And uh, you could also have all of these other elements fade away, just animate their opacity. All right, let's go back to uh, the edit your text here pre-comp and let's make a few changes to the text. First of all, let's change the font. Um, I believe I have it at courier by default. So you can change this, but it should be a monospace font. So monospace just means that each character takes up the same amount of space. So the most common monospace fonts are Courier or Lucida Console or Monaco. Okay, uh, let's also change the font size. We can make this bigger and let's move it. Let's move it up and to the left and we can even change the color if we wanted to. Pretty much everything that you do to it in this character panel, those changes will also be reflected in your final comp. So you can make it italic or bold or whatever you want to do. Okay, let's go back to our typewriter comp. You can see the text disappeared. That's because it's up here now. So we need to move the paper into place. <clears throat> so I'll select the control layer and uh, I'm going to delete the keyframes that I put on there earlier. And let's move the carriage first. Remember for horizontal adjustments, we use the carriage. And I'm gonna move my paper down just so I can see our text. And we need to go to the exact frame where this first character appears. So that would be at the one second mark because our type start time is set to one second. And I'll use the page up or page down button to go frame by frame so we can see that the exact frame where it appears, which is right there. So that's the frame we need to be on when we line up this character with the center of our guide. Um, I'll use my carriage position control and our paper position control. I'll adjust that until the, the baseline of our text lines up with this guide approximately. So let's play it back and uh, we're going to notice a problem here. You can see it's, it's getting out of sync, or it's not lining up anymore. That's because we changed the font of our text, or changed the font size rather, uh, and we haven't adjusted our character width control here yet. So to make sure that everything lines up, we have to go to the frame where our last character shows up. And I'm going to hide my ribbon so we can see. And I'll go frame by frame so it's right there. This is our last character. It appears on this frame. And now we can line up, not using the paper position, but using the character width control. I'm just using the arrow up button to adjust this value to make sure that character lines up. And then we'll unhide our ribbon and this animation should be good to go now.
All right, let's talk about multiple lines of text. I know we haven't even gotten to the second typewriter yet, and I think I'm going to save that for last. So for now, let's just open up this Edit Your Text Here comp, and I might make a few adjustments. I'll put this up here in the top left. And since we're going to have multiple lines of text, we want this to be left aligned or left justified. So you can do that in the paragraph panel with this button right here. And it's very important to remember that when you set this to left aligned, you also have to do it with the text layer in your typewriter comp. So I mentioned earlier that almost all of the properties in this character panel, if you change them on this text layer, then it automatically changes on the text layer in your typewriter comp. Well, the paragraph alignment property is one of the only properties that does not change automatically. So you have to remember to, uh, to do it on your text layer in the typewriter comp as well. So we can just select our text layer here and then click on the left alignment button. It's really easy to forget. So uh, I recommend you just do it. As soon as you click it here, go to your typewriter comp and do it there as well. Okay, so you could use your text tool to just type in multiple lines of text here. Uh, more than likely though, you probably have some text you want to copy and paste into here. So I've got some lorem ipsum dummy text here that we can just copy and I'll paste it under this layer. What you don't want to do is create a new text box like this um, because that's not going to work. You have to edit the existing text layer that's in here. I'll delete that and I'll move this over a little bit, maybe make it a little bit smaller. And you'll have to break up the lines yourself and just go to where you want the line to end and push enter or the return button. All right, that looks pretty good. I'll go back to my typewriter comp and we have to move our paper into position. So I'll go to the control layer and adjust the paper position holding down shift as I drag the value to make it go faster. And I'll go forward a second because that's when our text types out because our type start time is set to one second. And uh, we got to find where that first character appears. So I'm going to hide the type bar guide and the ribbon. So L is our first character and it's almost sitting on our guideline. I might just bring it down a little bit. And I'll move the carriage over a little bit. All right, so that lines up. And now I'll go forward to the end of our line. And I think I'm going to reduce our type speed because at eight frames per character, it's going to take forever to type out all that text. So I'll change that to four maybe. And I'm just looking for the frame where our last character of the line appears. That O right there. And there's the frame where it appears. So now we can adjust our character width until the O lines up with our type bar guide. Okay. So now we need to animate our typewriter to get the paper into position for our next line of text. So I'll hit the page down button to go frame by frame. There's our space bar character. And uh, I want to bring back our type bar guide and our ribbon. We want to make sure the ribbon is down and nothing's moving. No type bars are coming up. And that's a good time to pause our typing. We have to pause the typing to give us time to move into position for the next line. So uh, to do that, we click on this pause typing checkbox. If we reveal our keyframes now with the U key, you can see that added a hold keyframe right here. And we'll go forward a few frames. And now is usually when I like to add my sound effects. So if you want, there are a lot of sound effects inside this folder here. Pretty much any movement you want to animate on your typewriter, there's a sound effect for it. Um, we've got all of these sound effects that came from this older typewriter. And we've got a couple other folders here with sound effects taken from two newer, like 80s typewriters. I just added these for, for variety. So you can go through those if you want, or to make things easier, I have these sound effects down at the bottom of the comp for just this type of thing that you can use when you animate to go to the next line. And uh, 
There's also these spacebar audio layers. I'm not sure if I mentioned these or not, but these play automatically with each spacebar character. But let me drag these sound effects over. I know we're already at the right frame, so I'll just move this over like this, line them up. So this short clip here, that's the return button. as the sound effect for going to the next line. So it starts there. So that's when we will start to keyframe our paper position control. I'll select the control layer and go to my effect controls and I'll add a paper position keyframe. And then I'll go to the end of that clip. Um, this is around the end of a clip. So that's when I would end our paper animation. So um, we'll reveal the keyframes for that. U key. We've got our first keyframe there, so now we'll just change the value to make our paper move up. And I'm just kind of eyeballing, estimating where that next line of text is going to be. Uh, you can always come back and change it later if you're off. But that looks about right to me. Let's make this longer. And now we'll go forward a few more frames. And we want to animate our carriage returning. So on the control layer, we'll add a keyframe for the carriage position. And then we'll go forward to the end of our carriage returning clip. And we'll adjust our carriage, holding down shift as we drag. Okay, we know that's the right position because it lines up with our L. The next character is going to line up there. So here's kind of what your keyframes should look like. Uh, we still need to add one more keyframe, and that is to unpause our typing. So I'll just go forward a few more frames, and I'll check the checkbox. You don't have to set the character width control again. That's already done. So all you would need to do now is to repeat those steps at the end of each line of text. So pause the typing, add your keyframes for the carriage position and paper position, and then unpause typing. And then uh, you can just duplicate these sound effects layers and put them into position. And one other thing, don't forget to unmute the sound effects so you can hear it. I'll play that back and we can see what it looks like. So if you wanted to, you could zoom out on the control layer so that you can see the whole page. That might make it easier to read. All right, let's look at our second typewriter. This should go quick because it's a really similar process. You can see our type bars are way over here because it's it's trying to guess where our text is. Remember our Laura Mipsum text is left justified. It's all the way on the edge. Uh, and also remember that we need to change that on this text layer. So I'll select that layer and hit left align. And uh, we're too zoomed in right now to see anything. So I'll go to the control layer and I'll use the typewriter scale control to zoom out. And I'll use our paper position control to move our paper into position. Somewhere around there, I'll go forward a second. So there's our first character. If the text is looking too rough looking, uh, you can just turn down the roughened text edges, straighten it up a little bit. Okay, so we just need to line this up Remember, there's no carriage for this typewriter. Instead of the carriage, we've got the ribbon position control. And that's what we use to make our horizontal adjustments. Okay, that's about right. I'll move my paper down a little bit. So this part right here is the hammer. That's the part that strikes this ribbon. So that's where you want your letters to appear. And then same as before, you would go to the end of your line and go to where your last character appears and then line up your type bars using your character width control. And same deal, we've got a, an effect here, a sound effect for going to the next line. It's all on one layer, so you can just drag that over to where you want to go to the next line and then animate your paper and ribbon to go along with that sound effect. All right, I never got to these uh, advanced controls, so let me go over these real quick. I labeled them advanced because I don't think that you're gonna need to, to change these. 
but they're here uh, just in case something goes wrong. If something gets out of sync, uh, you can play with these and troubleshoot a little bit. So this first one, offset key strikes, uh, this is set to three because if we open up one of these key strike animations, we'll go forward three frames, hit the page down. The third frame is when the type bar strikes the ribbon. So we want these key strike animations to start playing three frames before the, the type bar strikes. But you can change that with this control. Um, next we've got the offset carriage shift and the carriage shift duration. So the carriage shift, that's not talking about when the carriage shifts all the way to go to the next line of text. That's just the small shifts that happen with each new character. And if we go frame by frame, looking at our animation, and I, we can't see the text. I undid a bunch of stuff and we can no longer see it, but that doesn't matter. We can still see the movement of the, of the carriage. If we go frame by frame, that's when the, the character should appear because the type bar is striking the ribbon. And then immediately afterwards, the next frame, you can see that carriage start to shift a little bit. So the movement starts one frame after the type bar strikes. You can see this is set to one. Um, you can change that if you want to offset it a little bit. And then also the carriage shift duration, this is set to 30% of eight frames. So that would be about 2.6 or something frames. Uh, that's how long this carriage shift will last. That's the duration of the that entire movement from one character to the next character. Uh, and you can adjust that if you want. Um, I never really experienced any problems with things getting out of sync, but I was worried that it, it might happen, and so I put these in here. Um, and you should be able to even keyframe these. So if any of the movements are getting more and more out of sync, over time, uh, you can just add a couple keyframes and change these values. All right, the last thing I want to go over is how to add variable speed typing. So how to make the characters type out more randomly and make your animation look more natural. I mentioned that in the old version, uh, this was kind of built into the template. So the letters automatically typed out at an irregular pace. And then you would add the key strike animations manually to each character that typed out. But I had to rebuild this template from the ground up in order to make those key strike animations automatic. And uh, there's still a way to do it with time remapping, so I'll show you that. What you need to do is drag the entire typewriter comp into this new comp icon. So we're putting the comp inside of a new comp. And it always takes me a moment to load. So now the new comp is opened up and we'll select a layer and we'll go to Layer, and Time, and Enable Time Remapping. And just a brief explanation of what this effect does. It controls the speed of, your, of the layer. So you can see we've got two keyframes right now. The first one with a value of zero, frame zero, and if you go to the end, this is the last frame of our minute of video here. If we add a keyframe somewhere in the middle, this layer will still play normally, but if we move this midpoint and squeeze it over here, now this part would be playing in fast motion. This part would play in slow motion. So we can add keyframes as a way to edit the clip, edit out a few frames here, stretch a few frames there. I'll delete that keyframe. I'll zoom in a little bit. The typing starts at one second, and we'll just go frame by frame. I'm going to set this to half to make it faster. And there's a number of ways to do this. Um, I'll make the first two characters type out really fast. Um, I'll add a keyframe right after the C is typed. I'll go forward a few frames. Add another keyframe. And we'll move those really close together. Now we're at where the, right after the R is typed. I'll add a keyframe. Go forward a few frames, another keyframe, and move that close. So this space between the keyframes is where the type bar actually strikes. And you don't want to squeeze or stretch those out. You want the, 
the actual type bar to strike in real time because if it plays in fast motion or slow motion it's going to affect the audio and the pitch will be too deep or too high depending on what you do. Okay I'm gonna go forward and now let's make a few pauses in between characters to slow it down. So I wait till the ribbon is down and nothing's happening and I'll add a keyframe and then I'll go forward a few frames and I'll just copy that keyframe and paste. So nothing's happening in between these frames. And we'll just do that again. Copy that. And I think you get the idea. I'll just go down and do the rest of this. The only thing to keep in mind is you need to add approximately the same number of frames that you are taking away. Because if you just keep adding new frames, your time code is gonna get more and more out of sync with the comps time code and the video is going to start playing at a, a different speed and it's going to affect the audio. So the way to keep an eye on that is just make sure that your time code on the this effect is about the same as the time code up here. Okay all done and let's look at that. So I think that looks much better. I don't know how many people are going to care about whether it types out at an irregular pace like that, but I really like it. Um, obviously you probably don't want to do that if you've got a lot of lines of text that's going to take a long time, but I figured I'd show you how to do it. It's, I definitely recommend it if you're just typing out something short like your company name. All right, that's everything that I wanted to show you. I uh, hope you really like the effect. Hope it saves you a lot of time. Uh, if you like this and you want to see other cool effects for After Effects, uh, just go to creationeffects.com. It has a lot of unique templates. The most recent one is called Landscaper, and it lets you create and animate 3D landscapes in After Effects. And it's got everything you need, all the effects and a thousand landscape elements so that you can create just about any type of landscape you can imagine. Another new release is Creation Trippy Effects. It's full of psychedelic animations as well as trippy effects for your footage. Uh, there are a number of animal templates. I have elephants, lions, horses, wolves, and panda bears. And as I mentioned earlier, there's the Critter Collection series, which includes flocks for making custom flocks of birds, swarms for custom swarms of insects, and schools for animating fish. There's also falling leaves and auroras. Uh, Ocean is a template with a different way to create realistic 3D bodies of water in After Effects. There's Infinite Horizon for creating perspective bending scenes. Micro, which lets you create uh, realistic microscopic animations. Pixel Pusher lets you make abstract particle animations. Wisp allows you to make custom 3D trails of particles. There's Network for animating networks of lines and dots, a 3D flag effect, ink bleeds. The custom 3D storybook is probably the all-time most popular. There are old film effects, old VHS effects, digital glitch effects, title effects, and another crowd favorite, creation artifacts, which allows you to convert your footage into animated artwork in just about any medium.